13 years ago, he met someone in the park, yes? And today he is in church praising the name of the Lord. This is why the church, uh, this is the purpose of the church, yes? For us to meet others where they are and to help them to bring them into the fold of God. Amen? I'm reading from the uh, English Standard Version. It says, many Samaritans, many Samaritans uh, from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. Lord. So here Jesus uh, uh, is meeting with a rich man. Uh, and now in verse 4, uh, we find a contrast because he moves from the high and mighty and educated. Uh, and now in chapter 4, he is with the law and despise. So do they see us as people who they can talk to and communicate with? Uh, or they see us uh, as people who think uh, that we are more than them? The first one is that when Jesus starts the, con the, the conversation, uh, Jesus starts out uh, with something uh, that was common. What did I say? common. In other words, uh, Jesus is at the well. The Bible says that Jesus uh, was thirsty because uh, of the long journey. So Jesus uh, is in need of water and the woman uh, is also at the well uh, in need of water. And when it is that we are communicating the gospel, when it is that we are going out uh, to seek uh, and uh, seek uh, uh, souls uh, for the kingdom of God, uh, we have to start somewhere uh, that is common. And how is it that you know what is common? It means that you have to spend time uh, to get to know people. And we, nowadays, uh, we focus on uh, baptism and numbers and filling up the church. Uh, but you're filling up the church uh, with a bunch of strangers uh, because nobody knows each other. And there's some of us, uh, when we go uh, to minister to others, uh, we are so focused uh, on the Bible study that if the person is hungry, they said, oh, let us pray and go right into the Bible. Bible study. And sisters, uh, Jesus now moves from the common thing uh, to communicate the gospel. Yes, you will go out and you will meet people and you will, you, 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 you will get to know them and you will have conversations with them and you will build relationship with them. Uh, but your purpose uh, is not to go and gossip. Your purpose uh, is not just to be another friend. Your purpose uh, is not just to be another person uh, in that person's life. Uh, your purpose uh, is not just to be any and any friend. Uh, but you are the friend. Are you listening to me? Uh, you must be the friend uh, who stands out uh, than any other friend. Uh, because as a people and as a church, uh, we have a message uh, to communicate. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, he starts out uh, with something that is common, uh, but Jesus uh, is communicating something to her uh, that she now needs to zoom in on uh, because Jesus uh, is saying uh, that you are coming uh, for the physical water, but when you drink from me, uh, you will have the living water. In other words, just like my brother, the sister met him in the park. Yes, where you meet people, it's not always going to be in church. But our responsibility is that where we meet them, we have to now move them from where God wants them we to be. Have to, yes, we may start by talking about uh, what we had for lunch. Uh, but we have to move uh, from the physical food uh, to the spiritual Please, food. Uh, it is together? more important uh, to know that God uh, has for us eternal life. Jesus, Jesus, he starts out with something that is common. Uh, 
and then he communicates the gospel. And what after did he, do? he after he communicated the gospel to her, this is what he did next. Jesus now challenged the woman. Jesus challenged a woman. I know you came for your physical water. I know you came. I know your 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 your, your plan. Your, your plan was to come to the well, and nobody doesn't see when you come. I know you came at this time just because of what you're going through and how you feel about yourself and how you have lost confidence and how how people ridicule you and talk about you but here it is you have come for what you have come for but I'm gonna challenge you to try what I'm offering and our responsibility as God's people. Yes, when we start where is common, where we communicate the gospel, our challenge to them uh, is to try Jesus. Are you listening to me? Our challenge is for them to try Jesus. Yes, you have been trying it by yourself. You have been going through it by yourself. You have been doing this by yourself and that by yourself but how about trying Jesus how about giving it to Jesus how about taking the pain and putting it in the hands of Jesus how about taking the worry and the anxiety and all the problems and say Jesus I'm gonna put it in your hands Jesus I'm gonna try you because all my efforts have equal to naught so we are challenging people to try Jesus. Uh, we are not challenging people to try church. Are you listening to me? We are not challenging people to try a denomination. We are challenging people to, to try Jesus. Because in Jesus, there is life. In Jesus, there is hope. In Do people Je leave church so often? Is that what they are trying it's not Jesus. They are trying church. I was writing a paper this week. And I had to write a paper around discipleship. And I based my paper on St. Matthew chapter 28 verses uh, 16 down. And if you notice the text, the text says, uh, make disciples uh, and then you baptize them. But we baptize and then make disciples. First, in other words, introduce people to Jesus and help them to have a relationship with Jesus first. And out of their relationship with Jesus, baptism is now a result of that relationship. I've given you three C's so far. The first one is start somewhere. Come on. The next one is communicate. Yes, communicate the. Talk to me now. Communicate the. The gospel. Yes. And the third one is that you challenge the person. And we're challenging them to do what? To try Jesus. Yes. And after, after you challenge that person to try Jesus, your work in soul winning is not yet done. Because now you have to help that person to reach that place of conviction. Are you with me? You have to help the person. Yes, conviction is not up to us, but God can use us in the process. Are you with me? God, he can use us uh, to do whatever he wants us to be because uh, we are his hands. Uh, we are his feet. Uh, we are his lips. Are you listening to me? Uh, we may not have uh, the best perspective of us, uh, but if we just hang in there uh, and allow God to use us uh, from day to day, they will have uh, a different perspective uh, of us uh, because we are not on 
our mission, uh, but we are on God's mission. Uh, so that when we get in contact uh, with people, uh, one day in our connection uh, with them, uh, they must say that you speak like a Christian. You walk like a Christian. Uh, you act like a Christian. You talk like a Christian. You sound like a Christian. They must see and know that Jesus is living inside of us. When it says you have to preach this message to every single person, it doesn't matter their nationality or their background or their financial status or where they live. or It doesn't matter who they are. Sometimes in, in winning others to Jesus, you have to forget about the people you sit in church with. Uh, she was now change, but guess what? Now she uh, reached a place uh, of conviction uh, in that moment, uh, and in that moment, uh, she became a disciple. As a matter of fact, uh, she was more a converted disciple than those who were walking with Jesus. Uh, are you listening to me? Uh, you may ask, What is the timeline? The timeline was in a couple of minutes. That is the power of the gospel. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you don't have to be in church uh, for 13 years uh, or 5 years uh, or 1 year uh, to be uh, a disciple of Jesus. Uh, all you have to do, uh, it says, all to Jesus. Uh, I surrender uh, all to him. I freely give. So here it is, verse 41. The Bible says, uh, and many... You didn't hear me. Verse 39. And many Samaritans, what did they do? They believed. They believed first. They believed upon the testimony of this woman. People. But the Bible, the, the author now intensifies it and says upon her testimony, many believed. But the Bible says in verse 41, and many more believed because of his word. Whose word? The word of Jesus. She ran and said, come and see a man. They came and they saw this man. And they believed in Jesus. They believed his word. They believed his word. And here what they said to the woman, it is no longer... Because of your testimony. Are you with me? It is no longer because of what you told me in the park, brother. It is no longer of what you told me while I was in church. But my brothers and sisters, it's no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard. You didn't hear me. We have heard. We have experienced him. We sat with him. We talked with him. He did something for me. We have heard for ourselves. And we know. Oh, hallelujah. And we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. Jesus, in chapter 3, he met with the rich and mighty. But now Jesus is meeting with somebody that society has rejected. Society does not see this person as important. But Jesus says, guess what? I will start the mission in Samaria with somebody who they don't expect the message is coming from. And when my brothers and sisters, she went and says, come see a man. They only had one thing to do, which was to come and see Jesus. And up on her testimony, many believed. Talking about soul winning. It's not just about getting people in church, but it is helping people to have their own experience with God. And if it is that we have people who are having their own experiences with God, the only thing that you can say is that, listen, come and see a man. 
come and try Jesus. Come and give Jesus a chance. And I know that even as we get ready to close, some of us, if we check our own life, we come to church every week, but there is no commitment into getting another person to church with you. We are so bombarded. Go ahead and play. We're so bombarded with all the things we have to do from a day-to-day -day basis. We're so some bombarded with paying the bills and taking care of the family and going to school and going to work and, and getting things done uh, around the home. We are so bombarded by these things, uh, but yet still we fail to remember our main calling which is to be a servant of God and if what you're doing on a daily basis is not touching the lives of others maybe you need to recheck what you're doing and evaluate what you're doing Jesus the whole conversation was around water she came for water. He started somewhere that was common, which is water. After he started with someone in common, he communicated the gospel. You're here for water, but I want to give you a better water. He challenged her, try my water. She reached a place of conviction. Give me this water to drink. Then Jesus issued the command. Go call your husband. She didn't just go and call her uh, the husband that she was borrowing. But she went and called every single person. And they believed her. But now they have their own testimony. And today my friends. The question is, as a church, can we do more? As individuals, can we do more for the kingdom of God?